What is up, guys? It is the Blue Blood tier back with another interview. And man, I'm excited for this one. I'm already dubbing him the Devin Hester of the OVC. This guy is a kick return specialist, a wide receiver for Murray State. 2018 All-OVC Newcomer Team, multi-time All-OVC All-American Selection. Malik Honeycutt is with us, man, and I appreciate you coming on the show. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely, man. So, you know, you came out of Tallahassee, Florida, man. Pretty, you know, you know, big football scene down in the state of Florida. What teams were on you the hardest coming out of high school? Um, Out of high school, I had a lot of them. The hardest – oh, my first offer was Georgia State. Uh, I believe it was them. I got them at uh, Alabama football camp. So, uh, yeah, I believe it was Georgia State. I like it. So, you initially commit to Delta State, man. What kind of led into your decision to going there? And, you know, what you know what also played into the, you know, factors of leaving Delta State to go to the community college route? Uh. Well, out of high school, I didn't pass the ACT until after signing day. So a lot of the D1 schools that I had, you know, they kind of left me alone because of that. So I had to sign the Delta State. Well, I had a couple of more schools that were, like, interested in me after I signed. But after I ended up passing the ACT, I looked at school stats, like uh, how much they threw the ball or uh, ran the ball. And since I'm a receiver, so I was looking for a school that threw the ball a lot. And Delta State was top on the list, so I ended up going there. And then, hey, <laughs> I like it, man. I like how you like looked into that, man. I think that's something that you know players list, listening could probably look into a lot. Yeah, I, I I looked at that like stats going into Delta State, going to my first year of college, going into junior college, and then uh, transferring to Murray State. I, that's like one of the top things that I look at. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely, man. So you go the JUCO route, you wind up in Mississippi, you know, the JUCO Mississippi scene, which as we saw with last chance, you one of the most competitive, you know, crazy scenes um on the JUCO. What were the biggest obstacles you had to face and overcome while being on this journey through JUCO college football? Uh the biggest obstacle, I don't know, like I guess being being on my own and being in a in a place where it was nothing there like from what I'm used to like you know I'm from Tallahassee Florida you know we it's the capital of Florida it's, we have everything there and then transferring to Itawamba Junior College in Fortune Mississippi in the middle of nowhere it's nothing like it is you really have to be mentally strong to go and get through. Juco. Absolutely, man. And, you know, I think I think a lot of people were, you know, I, I, like, I guess ignorant is a word. They were just like uneducated about how hard Juco was on players, man, because I think until last chance you came out, they didn't understand that some of you guys had to have jobs, the living conditions, the cities that some of these Juco's were in. I mean, uh, props to you for getting through it, man. You go to Murray State, though. Why was that your choice, and what other teams were kind of looking at you as you were coming out of the JUCO ranks? Oh, well, when I came out of JUCO, I had a lot of schools on me. Um, the biggest – I mean, like, not the biggest schools, but the schools that were on me the most, it was obviously Murray State, East Carolina, um, Tulane, um, those were the, the, the ones that tried to recruit me the hardest, especially East Carolina. Oh, and Middle, Middle Tennessee. I forgot about them, Middle Tennessee. But um, after I finished my season at Itawamba, my office of coordinator from Itawamba came here to Murray State. So like, it just made like the process a lot easier. And that was after the fact that I searched, you know, obviously the stats on um, if they threw the ball a lot. And I seen that they threw the ball a ton. And then they had one receiver that really got the ball a lot. His name by Jordan Gandy. And he was a senior. So, you know, he, I felt like it was a spot that needed to be filled. And I felt like I could do that. And plus, my officer coordinator came here. So that was an additional plus to come here. I mean, that, that's crazy that, you know, it worked out like that for you. And you've been, you, you know, one of the things that makes you special and I kind of want to get into it is the 
the I guess explosiveness in the kick return game, the punt return game, man. You don't see it in a lot of players, and it's a real special skill that not a lot of people have. What makes you such a dynamic return specialist? Um, um I guess it's I like okay, first you don't have to be the fastest or like the strongest or nothing because I'm I'm most definitely not the fastest on my team. And I'm kind of strong for my size, but I'm most definitely not the strong. But for me, it's my vision and being able to know that a player is coming behind me without looking that way. Like, I can see him right. one second right here and then run 10 yards down the field, and I can just feel him. And I know, like, I got to stop and break for him to come and miss me. Like, it's my, it's my vision and be able to know, like, where people at on the field. Oh, man. I know, uh, guys, go check out his Twitter. We'll plug it at the end. But, uh, you know, I usually try to get a bunch of different highlights. You have a kick return on your Twitter, man, that or like a punt return that's just so ridiculous. They, they like put the little joystick emoji on it and everything. And I was like, I might just have to put that highlight on the highlight reel because that one was yeah. outrageous. You know, so a lot of people say, you know, a lot of wide receivers and cornerbacks, those are usually the positions that get to – be a return specialist. They say you got to have a little bit of like a screw loose and that you get that pit in your stomach when everyone's coming at you full speed. Do you ever get any nerves on kickoffs or punt returns when you see the whole field coming at you knowing that you got the ball and you got to get it to the other side of the field? Oh, yes, yes, most definitely. But <laughs> it's not even when I had a ball in my hand. It's when they kick the ball off and it's in the air. That's when, like, I have all the butterflies and everything. It's like – First of all, I'm thinking about uh, I got to catch the ball because if I catch the ball, if I don't catch the ball, then I'm about to get smacked. So <laughs> first thing. But once I once I get the ball in my hands, it's like everything goes away and it's just time to you know, get the business. Man, I, I like to hear it. That's what that's what that's one like position. We've never had anybody on the podcast that return kicks and punts like this. So I had to ask that. But. Looking at you as a wide receiver, man, what are your biggest strengths as a wide receiver that you think you bring to Murray State right now? Oh, um, my biggest strength is my route running and being able to get off man press. Like, uh, I don't know if you've seen the film from when we just played in the spring, but it speaks for itself. Every time we're in man coverage, it's not a lot of DBs that can compete with me with that. Oh man, I, I, yeah, so I've seen a few where you chuck somebody. And I was like, man, that I, I know it's a DV. Like it, your heart would just sink. You're like, man, I just got tossed like a child out the way, and he's running up the field. But you know, you don't have to give away all your trade secrets, man. Especially as a wide receiver. But what's one thing when you look at your game that you would like to improve just a little bit to take your game to that next level? Uh, to improve it, uh, moving without the ball, uh, knowing that the ball is not coming to me and I'm still doing my job and still doing what I need to do to get uh, either my running back open on the screen or my my outside receiver, you know, make sure, you know, doing the extra things. Right. So do you guys train a lot on how not to, you know, give away any tips? So, like, if you know you're not getting the ball, like, how, how much do you all train, you know, acting like you're going to get the ball on every play? Well – if it's a if it's a uh a pass play, it's you never know who it's going to. You okay. might think that you know that it's going into, you know, this specific receiver room, but you don't know. So our coach, you know, uh is on us heavy about us running our route every play like you're gonna get the ball. Because you never know when it can come to you. Because this one play can be designed for me. I can run I'm supposed to run a hitch and it's supposed to come to me. I run the hitch and I get covered and and say if the next person is not doing his job and he knows or thinks that the ball is coming to me and I'm covered, what's going to happen next? All right. Oh, man, I like it. And so that kind of leads me to my next question perfectly. You, your football IQ is coming like off real strong right now. How much film do you watch during the week leading into a game on an opponent? Oh, leaning, uh, a lot. Uh, I started like – I watch like I'm doing now. I, I the teams that we we're playing this season. I've been watching film of them from last season. Oh wow! Yeah, I try to look at the cornerback tendencies, like on third down, third and long, or you know, if it's 
uh, uh, first and short or whatever, just try to see how they play. And so I can figure out, you know, how can I beat them? How can I bring their uh, weaknesses out? Man, and, you know, you don't have to give me everything here, but when you watch a corner, is there a certain thing that they can do? Or, like, is it is it their footwork's off? Is it they get up on you too close? What's one thing a DB could do where if you see it, you know you got them beat immediately? Oh, if they don't touch me. <laughs> but, you see, that's tough, though, because you just said you can't press. So it's like, how what, what are we supposed to do here, man? If I'm a D coordinator, I'm frustrated. But – you know, man, you're going to be one of the senior leaders on this Murray State team. And, you know, for people who don't know Murray State football, this team is always at the top of the OVC competing, man. As a senior leader, what is what are the team goals for Murray State going into this season? Team goals is to win every game in the OVC. Well, not even just the OVC, every game that's on our schedule. It's not just like our uh, Coach Hood, our uh, head coach, he says, is no team that on our schedule that we can't beat, and is no team on our schedule that can't beat us. So we can't underestimate any team, and we have to go to every game like we're gonna win. It doesn't matter if it's FCS or FBS. Oh man, I like the confidence, man. I really do. And so I asked you team first because I know that's the most important. What are some of your personal goals that you have written down somewhere you got in your head that you want to have achieved by the end of this uh, 2021 season? Um, well, at the top of my list right now, uh, I want the per punt return record here. And uh, I want to be on – well, I'm not – I don't want to be on. I will be on first team OVC for wide receiver. That's one thing I haven't did yet. So that's my two goals right there. Oh, man, I like it. And I, I'm sure – I think – I'm pretty sure you've been the OVC selection for the return specialist every year you've been at Murray State. So, like, if you complete a clean sweep, man, how how great – you know, would that be one of your biggest accomplishments to be all OVC return specialist every year you played? Uh, honestly, that, that, that wasn't a thing that I ever thought about doing. Just being all conference for kick return, punt return. I always, you know, wanted to be – all conference for receiver and i haven't been since i've been here but that doesn't like if you watch them you know that um i'm not a receiver that to be played with to take lightly oh man i like it listen when you when you make that ovc list for wide receiver and return specialist man we'll have you back on man well well we got to get you back on after you win both of them because i'll be huge but I know the first game is the most important, and that's what I get a lot of the times. But then there's always a but that follows because there's always that one game you got circled. Which game on y'all's schedule for the 2021 season are you looking forward to the most? Um, it's really, it's really, I mean, all of them for me, but Cincinnati, Cincinnati and Bowling Green, just because they're, uh, FBS, and you know they're on a bigger stage than us, and you know that's a lot of exposure for us. Uh, but in conference, the game I'm looking to is Austin P. Uh, Austin P. beat us last year by a last second, last uh, yeah, minute field goal, and, and and that hurt me. And yeah, I'm I'm looking for that one. Man, I, I'm not gonna lie, that Cincinnati game. If you guys pull that one out, because they're probably gonna be preseason, probably top 15, I would imagine after what they did last year and then you versus Ahmad Gardner. That's a matchup I'm writing down right now. I can't wait to see because I, I know that's a future NFL matchup right there. But looking at your game now, man, just as a wide receiver, you don't have to go into the kick return or anything like that. Which NFL wide receiver do you model your game after the most? Stephon Diggs. Oh, that's a good pick. I like uh, man, he's he's balling out there in Buffalo too. I feel like I feel like he was underrated for like so many years and then these past two years, he's just like exploded onto the scene. Exactly, and that's that's why that's a more reason for me to to relate to him because he's been underrated, and but he's always been like that on the field, and that's oh, just. Man. But I feel like you know our movements, how we get open, you know, it's just it's it's almost the same. 
Oh, man, I like it. And so, you know, everyone has a routine on game day. And, you know, what do you have to do on game day? Do you have to eat a certain thing, listen to a certain thing? Like, kind of walk us through your pregame routine on game days, man. Um, I don't have a big, like, game day day routine. But I have, like, I have two things I have to do. I have to eat some cookies. And uh, before the game, I have to take two laps around the game with some headphones and listen to some music to pump me up. Oh man, I like I like the cookie thing, man. I know a lot of people like to get that like sweet, like that sugar in their system and everything. I like it, but you know, this one could be a tough question because I feel like it could go either way. I always try to do one per position on my interviews. What's more important for a wide receiver, speed or route running? Route running. That's easy. Just, just off the top, this this because I know some people would argue speed because they're just like, man, you can burn them over the top, but you're saying route running, no hands down. Yeah, hands down, Robinson. Because um, I know I know a lot of receivers that are way faster than me, but they can't get off the jam. They can't break down because you know they are so fast. But I know some fast receivers that can break down and you know do a little something. But the most important is, is route running because you can't run a go route every route. Right. Man, you gotta run a hitch. You gotta run a dig. You gotta know how to get off the press. Run a dig. You know. Is rock running. Oh, man, I like it. And so looking back at your career, man, y'all faced some big teams since you've been at Murray State, and you've played some stiff competition on the JUCO level too. Who is the best cornerback that you've ever had to go up against? Best cornerback? Um, uh, dang, that's hard. Uh <laughs> I guess Savion Smith. Ooh. And what 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 made him such a tough matchup? Just speed, just everything, just athleticism, speed, size. Yeah, he got size, speed, athleticism, all the above. And I had to face him out of high school and JUCO. Oh man, you got him twice. It's like ah, uh, can't get away from yeah. him. But you know That's- these these last. Oh, go ahead, man. Oh, yeah, I can say he got the best of me uh, in high school, but in uh, JUCO, I got my revenge back. I had about 150 on him. Oh, I, you just hang it up. Like, you're walking off the field, you're like, you got me a few years ago, but <laughs> I've been traded. Yeah. Oh, man, I like the competitiveness even, you know, now looking back, like, yeah, he got me, but I'm, I'm going to get you back. So, you know, for your career, man, you got all these accolades, man. You're gonna be you're gonna be your name's gonna be called on, on like NFL draft, whatever day it is. I think it's Thursday now, Friday. What keeps you motivated year in and year out, despite all the accolades, all the credit, you know, the wins, everything? What 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 motivates Malik Honeycutt? Uh my family, uh my dad especially. Uh, every time I go back home, you know, watching how he works, how he has to work like two, maybe even three jobs and to, to support our family and, you know, see it in the way that we live and how my brothers and sisters live back home in Fort Lauderdale, like that motivates me, motivates me the most because I don't want them to go through that the rest, the rest of our lives. Oh, man. Uh- I love to hear, man, and you know, make it definitely making everyone proud, man, balling out every every single year. But this last question, man, you know, I'm expecting to see you invited to some postseason games and everything like that, and you know, the NFL combine and everything like that. So if an NFL franchise pulls you aside and asks what they're gonna get if they draft Malik Honeycutt, what do you tell them? Um, they're gonna get a team player that motivates everyone, that wants to get the best out of everyone. Uh, a competitor, a person that's going to work hard, grind, and give it his all. And he's not going to back down to nobody. Oh, man. I, I love to hear it, man. And listen, I, I need to invite to the draft party. Um, when you, when you, when you uh, graduate and go to the NFL draft and everything, man. But I appreciate you coming on the show, man. This was a great interview. I'll be looking all, man, rooting all Murray State this year. But this is your time with this. NIL and everything else going on, man. Where can everyone find you on social media? Where can people contact you? And just any shout outs or anything you want to say, man, this time's yours. Uh, I mean, my Twitter and 
Instagram. They're both the same. You can just search my name. It's right here, Malik Honeycutt, M-A-L-I-K-H-O-N-E-Y-C-U-T-T. That's my Twitter and my Instagram. And, I mean, I want to shout out my dad, my mom, my grandma, my everybody back home, all my family, you know, Tallahassee relatives. Uh, I love y'all. And to everybody that's watching, that, that's that been watching OVC football, <laughs> we got a surprise for y'all. That's all I know. Oh, I like it, man. I like it. Coming for the OVC this year, man. I'll be rooting y'all on, man. Definitely be staying in touch. We'll get you some merch, too, man, for coming on the show. Appreciate you so much. Guys, make sure to go follow Malik on all social media, man. The bigger these guys' social medias are, the better opportunities they get down the road, man. So make sure to support the players as much as y'all can. And, guys, y'all know where to find us, man. Subscribe on YouTube, any and all podcast streaming platforms. But for Malik, myself, Murray State Football, and the Blue Bloods, man, we are out.